Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Mr. Fix-It channel. In this episode, I've got a 1982 Honda Passport C70. And it don't just need a lot of help, it needs all the help. Stay tuned. I was sitting out there in the shed one evening, not doing too much of nothing, just kind of staring at the wall. And... Okay, so I don't know much history on this bike, other than the fact that I found it in the backyard. And the story I was told is they were riding it, it ran good, and they parked it. The next day they come out to start it, and the engine was locked up. So, <laughs> this ought to be fun. You can see the, uh, the seat's in excellent condition here, so we'll leave that alone. Um, I need to get open to the battery. It's behind here. Uh, we need to check out the gas tank, but more importantly... Why is the engine stuck? Alright, I just want to go ahead and just check and see if there is actually oil in the engine. So let me get some of this stuff scraped away. Okay, well it appears there's oil in it. Doesn't look terrible. Okay, let me just try the kicker here. Ooh, yeah, that's... It's not moving, so that's not a good sign. I mean, the engine may not be salvageable. I'm not going to put a bunch of money into this thing, obviously. So, what can we do here? I'm going to try putting it in gear and rolling it back and forth, maybe? i tell you what, let's pull the spark plug out. Alright, let's see what this looks like. Okay, first off, it's got an auto light in it. That is the wrong plug. It should have an NGK plug in it. Okay, so the spark plug looks eh, like it's on the rich side, maybe burning some oil. I don't see any mechanical damage. Alright, I think before I go any further with this, uh, it's got a bunch of like grass and debris and stuff on it. I'm going to roll this outside and I'm just going to blow this thing off and get all this debris out of here. Let me just put this in gear and kind of push it back and forth and see if I can get the engine to turn that way. Should be first, second, should be third. Okay, so it don't it don't grab and reach backwards. Yeah, that's definitely stuck. I'm gonna try to pop this cap off of here and see if I can get a wrench on the crankshaft. Uh, feels like it may be a 14 millimeter. Okay. Yep, it's a 14. Alright. Oh, yeah, that's definitely not moving. Oh, wait a minute. Well, it'll roll backwards. Oh, I think I just loosened the flywheel nut. Yeah, that's what I did. So it'll roll backwards, but it won't roll forwards. Okay, after messing around with this for a minute, I, I grabbed a zip tie and stuck it down in the spark plug hole to see if uh, I can feel the piston moving to see if it didn't have a broken rod or something and the piston is moving and I noticed that I can turn it I can rotate it backwards to a point and then it stops and if I rotate it forward to a point and then it stops and if you notice that's almost in the exact same point as it is going this way and it's a dead stop and if I rotate it backwards like this I can I'm, pushing on the kickstart lever here you can see that the kickstart wants to crank the motor over so I'm pretty sure this is a classic case of one of the two a stuck open valve or a broken timing chain which if uh, they were trying to kick this thing over and was putting any pressure into it more than likely bent a valve so I think I'm going to have to get in here to the camshaft the top end and see what's going on up here because I think the problem is in the head. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can't pop this cover off the end here. Alright, 
there's the rockers. If I crank the engine over, you can see the exhaust valve opening there, but if I go any further than that, it stops. Right there. If I go backwards, you can see the exhaust valve close, and then it stops. Alright, so I dug into the top end as far as I want to go to determine that it the problem's not in the top end. The valves are moving, everything seems to be okay up here. I think the next step is to take this cover off and see what's inside there, see if there's anything broken or what. So maybe it's a Kickstarter? I don't, I'm not sure at this point. Let's keep digging. Alright, so I got the exhaust off and I was taking the foot pegs off and the kickstand's part of the foot peg assembly and I can't take the side cover off till I take that off so I kind of got it strapped to the ceiling. So let me see if I can get this cover off now. Uh, oh, there's pieces falling. That's not good. Took a little bit of convincing, but it's coming off now. I hear stuff falling out of there. It might be the uh, clutch adjuster falling out. Yeah, that's what it was. Clutch adjuster falling out. This deal here. Hmm. Well, don't look like it's on this side. <laughs> Maybe we'll just dig all the way into this thing. All right, I got tired of screwing around with this on the bike. I went ahead and pulled the motor off, got it up here on the bench, and uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. I think the next step is to go ahead and just pull the head off. I was trying to avoid doing that because I don't have a head gasket, but I think now is the time to pull the head and see if there's something bound up inside here. I can't see anything on this side. I can't see anything on that side. So let's do that. Well, I found the problem, and you're not going to believe it. Let me just zoom in here. Look at that. Oops, too far. That is a screw. Or part of a screw. Look at that. Down in the cylinder. How's the head look? Head took damage. Wow. Well, at least we figured it out, right? Might be able to fix this head. I don't know. Looks like it's got the valve pushed open slightly. Man, tiny little screw fell in the engine. All right, so the head took some damage. Pretty good damage here. It's kind of pushed the aluminum up and over the valve seat. I think I'm going to take a Dremel and try to get that off of the valve seat and then maybe lap this in and it may seal. Alright, it's got a tiny little rotary file. Let's see what I can do here. Yep, the valve's bent. I tell you what, a lathe and a dial indicator is a magical tool. So I ended up just putting this in the chuck and using my hammer and tapping this thing around and I think I got it straight. That little bump you see there, that's just some dirt or something on the surface, but that looks pretty straight. I think I can lap that in. Alright, I got that lapped in. And looking at the valve sealing surface here, I got a nice grind all the way around. So it looks like I got this valve fixed. I'm just going to drop it in here. I'm going to thread the spark plug back in. And I'm going to fill this up with some fluid and see if anything leaks through.
Okay, well nothing leaked through on the exhaust side, but it's definitely leaking through on the intake side, so I guess I should pull that valve out. Well, it is holding fluid now. This is a uh, brake clean, by the way. If that don't leak through there, I think it's going to hold some compression in. I think I'm going to put this back together and see if it'll run. It is important that you do not have any sharp edges in the combustion chamber because it'll cause pre-ignition. So there's some rough edges right here on the piston. I'm going to try to take those off real quick. All right, I got this head all back together. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the head back on and I'm not gonna replace that gasket for a simple fact that I don't have another one. Okay, the easiest way I found to do it is I got my, I got my cover temporarily installed. I got a wrench holding it on the T-mark because it kept wanting to rotate on me. I put my sprocket in the chain. There's a little dot on the sprocket. If you look on the head here, there's a notch in the head see it there now there's a there's a like a hole in the cam right there I line that up with that notch and I want to try to get this dot since it's the the mark on the head is slightly below center I put the dot slightly below center or right, I'm gonna get my camshaft so it's slid all the way in because this thing kind of rocks back and forth on you get it in there line that dot up with that dash Slip the timing chain sprocket through the head, push the cam back in a little bit, slide that all the way down. Now you got a little bit of spring pressure you got to deal with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and push on the sprocket this way, and on the back side I'm going to take my other hand and push the cam through the hole in the sprocket. Just like that. And just take a pick in there and I'll just line up the bolt hole. Now these three bolt holes are not equidistant. So you got to get this plate so that it matches these three bolt holes. Okay, after getting this carburetor torn down, cleaned up, and all put back together, I finally realized where that screw came from that was in the cylinder. This is the choke flap, and it goes in there. So whenever I get a bike and they tell me they replaced the carburetor and they paid $12 for it, I always ask if they have the original carburetor. And this is one of the reasons why, because these aftermarket Chinese carburetors are really not that great. So the tiny little screw that was stuck in the cylinder happened to be holding the choke flap on. So it come unscrewed, swallowed the screw, and destroyed the engine. And then the, sh the shaft that the flap rides on, of course, walked its way out. So all that is missing. So here's the original carburetor. You can see the choke flap there. This thing is no good, it's not usable, so I'm going to have to use this, but i got to swap these parts from here to here. Alright, i got those parts swapped over. I put 
red Loctite on the screw, and I also mushed the threads down on the back side so it cannot come out of there. And let's get this installed on the motor. Before I put this motor back on this, I want to pull the throttle cable because it's stuck. So let me get this off of here and see if I can't loosen it up or maybe I'll have one or something. Yeah, that was stuck too. Get this throttle cable out of here. Okay, I do not have another cable, so I gotta try to get this one to work. It does move a little. So maybe I can get some lube in here and make this thing work well again. Okay, I got the throttle cable freed up. And a good a good test to see if your throttle cable is gonna return properly is if you coil it over like this and it still moves freely, then you're good to go. This one's a little gritty, but it does move smoothly. The uh, kill switch is stuck, so I gotta get into that now. That's all it took. Alright, this is a homemade spark tester. I made this years ago. This was actually a recommendation on how to build this and a repair manual for a motorcycle that I had. So let's see if we got some spark. Oh yeah. Good spark. Alright, well I guess it's now or never. I'm going to spray some stuff in the carburetor and see if this thing barks off. Sounds like a runner. I need to get the gas tank cleaned out and get the fuel hooked up to it now. I'm gonna start with cleaning the outside of this tank because it's just disgusting to touch. All right, the electric start works. I got the compression gauge set up here. Let's see what kind of compression this thing's got. Now the starter don't sound great, but it does work. Looks like 140 PSI. Well, it fires up. Does not want to idle. Running very rich. Hmm. It's usually a lean condition. I gotta figure out why this thing's dumping fuel. Pull the carburetor off, I guess. I'm chasing this rich condition, and I got the old carburetor and the new carburetor on the bench here, and I'm just kind of comparing things. And some differences is this one's got an air screw instead of a fuel, this one's got fuel instead of an air screw. Um, I think what's going on here is there's a mix match of parts. This is the slide, and this is the slide needle right here. Now, down in the carburetor throat, that hole there is where the needle slides through the needle guide, or the needle jet. So this is the one out of the new carburetor, and I noticed that there's a lot of play on that. See how much gap there is in there? 
Okay, so this is the needle jet out of the old carburetor. You can see there that fits nice and tight. So I think what the problem was is there's a mix match of parts. They used the old needle for the new carburetor. So I'm going to swap these parts out. They're not exactly the same. They're not the same diameter here, but I'm, I think it'll still fit up in there because the needle jet holder is what holds that in place. So let me try this. So I haven't actually hooked up the intake to the carburetor yet just because I hadn't gotten far enough into it to check the air filter. There's some definitely some debris in this thing and it is split. I don't know if you can see that. but And then uh, the crankcase vent is all chewed up there. I'll try to fix this. So I glued that together the best I could and I stuck this piece of tube for the crankcase vent so <laughs> it's kind of cobbled but I don't have another part I'd have to order a part so let's see if this is going to work let's get this air box put back together Well, after that test ride, I quickly realized that this thing needs a lot more work. Specifically with the front end, this thing has been wrecked, crashed, or something. And the front end's tweaked, this rack's all bent up. So, that's probably going to have to happen in another episode. But that's all the time I got for on this project today. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.